All right. Good afternoon, everyone, and happy International Women's Day. In his message, the Secretary General said that today, we celebrate the achievements of women and girls across all walks of life and all corners of the world. But we must also recognize the enormous obstacles they face, from structural injustices, marginalization, and violence, to cascading crises that affect them first and worst, to the, not de to the denial of their personal autonomy and rights over their bodies and lives. This year's theme focuses on innovation and technology for gender equality. The Secretary General said that technology can expand pathways to education and opportunities for women and girls, but can also be used to amplify abuse and hatred. We must close the digital divide and increase the representation of women and girls in science and technology, he said. And this morning, there was an event at the General Assembly Hall to mark the day. And in the Secretary General's absence, the chef de cabinet, Courtney Rattray, delivered the remarks on his behalf. And we shared those with you. And there are also various messages to mark the day from the heads of our agencies and programs. I also want to bring to your attention a brand new podcast produced by our colleagues in UN News. It is called Amplify Her, and it is a 10-part podcast spotlighting 10 inspiring women musicians from diverse cultural backgrounds talking about their challenges as women. The featured artists range from teenage Thai rapper Millie to Malaysian UNESCO youth advisor Alena Morang and Amel the voice of the Tunisian revolution. You can find Amplify Her on the UN News website. And in related news, this morning, the Security Council held a meeting on Afghanistan. Briefing council members, the Secretary General Special Representative for Afghanistan, Rosa Utunbaeva, said that she had few comforting messages on International Women's Day to the women and girls in Afghanistan. Ms. Utunbaeva pointed out, that at a moment when Afghanistan needs all of its human capital to recover from decades of war, half of the country's potential doctors, scientists, journalists, and politicians are shut in their homes, their dreams crushed, and their talents confiscated. She warned that funding for Afghanistan is likely to drop if women are not allowed to work. Ms. Otunbaeva said that our humanitarian action is challenged by an increasingly complex access and security environment, adding that we are also concerned that national women staff working for the UN will also be banned. Ms. Otunbaeva said that our ability to deliver is also affected by growing concerns about the looming threat of ISIL-K to our own security and that of our NGO implementing partners. Apart from the construction of the rights of women and girls, constriction of the rights of women and girls, we are also witnessing an erosion of other human rights. Her full remarks have been shared with you. The Secretary General is on his way back to New York, where he will arrive tomorrow. Earlier today, he met with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in Kiev, and afterwards he told the press that his third visit to Ukraine in less than a year was to show the UN's full commitment and to seek solutions. The Secretary General expressed his deep solidarity with all the victims of the war, adding that they are all owed effective accountability. He reiterated his position that Russia's invasion of Ukraine is a violation of the UN Charter and international law. And he added that our ultimate objective is equally clear, a just peace based on the UN Charter, international law, and the recent General Assembly resolution marking one year since the start of the war. Mr. Guterres underscored the critical importance of the role over the Black Sea Grain Initiative on the 18th of March and of working to create the conditions to enable the greatest possible use of in export infrastructures through the Black Sea in line with the objectives of the initiative. He noted that the Black Sea Grain Initiative agreed last July in Istanbul has provided for the export of 23 million tons of grain from Ukrainian ports. It contributed to lowering the global cost of food and has offered critical relief to people who are also paying a high price for this war, particularly in the developing world. He added that safety and security around the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant is also vital. The Secretary General said that a possible mediation to seek the full demilitarization of the area while ensuring that the plant can return to normal operations would also be important. At the meeting, the Secretary General was accompanied by Rebecca Greenspan, the Secretary General of UNCTAD, Martin Griffiths, the UN's Emergency Relief Coordinator, and Denise Brown, the Resident and Humanitarian Coordinator in Ukraine. Tor Venisland, the UN Special Coordinator for the Middle East Peace Process, said today that he is deeply disturbed by the continuing violence and appalled by the attacks of Israeli settlers against Palestinians two days ago in Hawada, near Nablus. Israel, as the occupying power, must ensure that the civilian population is protected and perpetrators are held to account, he said. 
He condemned both settler violence against Palestinians and Palestinian attacks against Israelis. Mr. Venislan said that he is also alarmed by the events that unfolded yesterday during an Israeli operation in Jenin, resulting in armed exchanges between Israeli security forces and armed Palestinians. Six Palestinians were killed, including the perpetrator of the 26th of February terrorist attack in Hawara. We're in the midst of a cycle of violence that must be stopped immediately, he said. The parties must refrain from further steps that would lead us to more violence. The United Nations and other humanitarian partners continue to scale up the response to earthquake-affected areas across Syria, where at least 8.8 .8 million people have been affected. Most of these people are expected to need at least one form of humanitarian assistance. More than 4,500 deaths and 8,700 injuries have been reported in northwest Syria as of the 6th of March, since an earthquake of 7.7 .7 magnitude struck Turkey on the 6th of February. Thousands of people became homeless as more than 10,600 buildings have been completely or partially destroyed in northwest Syria. As of today, 648 trucks loaded with aid provided by seven UN agencies have so far crossed to northwest Syria since the earthquakes using the three available border crossings. The humanitarian coordinator at interim for Syria, El Mustafa bin Lamli, expressed deep concern today about the implications of the closure of Aleppo International Airport. You'll recall that the airport was hit by airstrikes yesterday. It has been forced to shut down until further notice. According to the Syria Ministry of Transport, all flights carrying earthquake aid had to be diverted to either Damascus or Latakia. The closure could have severe humanitarian implications for people in Aleppo, one of the worst earthquake-impacted governorates in the country, and could also affect the wider vulnerable population who need humanitarian assistance. All UN humanitarian air service flights from Aleppo have been suspended. These flights transport humanitarian partners and humanitarian cargo across Syria, including life-saving health supplies such as tetanus vaccines, testing equipment for blood transfusions, and diabetes medication. We call on all parties to, ab to abide by their obligations under international humanitarian law, including by taking all feasible precautions to spare civilians and civilian objects in the conduct of hostilities. In addition, humanitarian air services must resume without delay so that emergency assistance can reach those in need. Turning to the Democratic Republic of the Congo, our humanitarian colleagues say that more than 20,000 people have been displaced in North Kivu, in the east of the country, amid recent clashes between the Congolese army and the M23 armed group. Residents in the Kibirizi area, which is about 120 kilometers from Goma, were forced to flee due to fighting in surrounding villages. Over the past year, more than 800,000 people have been affected by renewed fighting between Congolese forces and the M23, according to authorities and our humanitarian colleagues. We call on all parties to the conflict to respect international humanitarian law, protect the civilian population, and secure access to populations in need of humanitarian assistance. And I was asked about recent reported killings in Myanmar. And I can say that the Secretary General condemns the brutal attacks and killings reported in Sagaing region and other parts of the country. The Secretary General is deeply concerned about the continued escalation of indiscriminate attacks by Myanmar's armed forces and calls for those responsible to be held accountable. He calls on all parties to adhere to international humanitarian law and international human rights standards. The United Nations continues to verify information on the recent attacks, which is difficult due to the lack of access and widespread internet and mobile network shutdowns. And that is it for me. Uh, are there any questions? Yes, Deshi. Couple questions. First one, uh, I don't recall. I remember uh, uh, you said anything about the um, the IAEA boss, uh, Mr. Gross's visit to Iran, which actually the Iranian government uh, committed to several obligations to 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 Mr. Grossi. Does the UN has any reaction on this? Uh, well, uh, we certainly uh, welcome any cooperation between. Uh, the Iranian government and the International Atomic Energy Agency. As you know, we've con repeatedly encouraged them uh, to, uh, to work closely uh, with the IAEA. And uh, certainly we want them to follow through on the commitments that have been made to the IAEA. So do you think it's a positive uh, move there? Uh, well, we'll have to see the sort of uh, uh, continued uh, progress made by the International Atomic Energy Agency in their work with Iran. But, uh, but we want Iran uh, to continue to cooperate. Uh, that's a crucial part of making sure 
uh, that uh, concerns about Iran's nuclear program are fully addressed. My next question is on Syria. Uh, just now you said that all the flights have been diverted from uh, Aleppo International to Latakia and Damascus. Yes. Uh, can, can you tell, do you have any numbers or can you tell, tell us how, what, how big is the impact for the closure of that airport for, for humanitarian relief? Uh, as I just mentioned, it's a, it's a very significant impact. Uh, Aleppo was a part of a very hard hit area. We need to get uh, aid in. And a lot of the things that we need, including, as I pointed out, medication for tetanus, medication for diabetes, and other uh, crucial items are now being diverted instead to Damascus and Latakia and then transported by road. Uh, it creates uh, delays and bottlenecks uh, that, that will make it much more difficult for us to reach people in need. So is there still no uh, cross-line humanitarian operation yet? Uh, I. There's very little. I believe we reported on one bit of cross-line activity last week. Uh, but, uh, but the problem is uh, uh, that there's issues with uh, uh, access t uh, through the cross-line uh, mechanisms. And so, uh, and so this makes it harder for us to get things in that way. Uh, we've, we've been uh, trying to make up for that with uh, the usage of the three cross-border points. James? Um, uh, been talking about, and then I've got a question on a third. Um, first, um, Mr. Wellers Wellersland's statement, why is it so late? I mean, if he talks about the news when it's in the news, then he'd make some impact. But it, it's like he's deliberately waiting to put out the statement so it's no longer in the news, so no one will actually focus on his statement. I think I would dispute the idea that this is no longer in the news. As far as I can tell, it's still in the news. But there were big events, and he's, 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 he's taken some considerable time to come out with statements. Uh, uh, I will note uh, your, um, your points on this. I believe that he is trying to time this at a, at a, at a way in which he feels it's best for impact. Uh, on that, by the way, I can add uh, that the Secretary General has also been uh, deeply alarmed by the growing number of civilians, including women and children, who continue to be the victims of violence in the occupied West Bank, and that includes the attacks uh, in Hawara. And, uh, and of course, uh, he's also following the latest developments that happened in Jenin. The Secretary General urges all concerned parties to take immediate steps to reduce tensions and break the cycle of violence. He calls for all perpetrators of unlawful violent acts to be held accountable. Uh, Black Sea Grain Initiative. Secretary General had an important meeting with President Zelensky. Last time, he needed to see President Putin too to get this done. I know he's spoken to the Deputy Foreign Minister of the Russian Federation, but there are 10, ten days and counting. What next? Uh, the, the next thing is that we do expect a Russian delegation uh, to go to Geneva next week for discussions. Uh, those would uh, include discussions with Rebecca Greenspan, the Secretary General of UNCTAD, who has been dealing uh, with the situation of uh, Russian uh, exports, including of fertilizers. And uh, as you know, she's been uh, pushing very hard to make sure that, uh, that obstructions to those exports are cleared. And one other question, if I may, on a different subject. Um, you've seen that there, were, um, there was a political rally that was scheduled in the hall. And then it was put down with tear gas and water cannon. It's following all sorts of uh, arrest warrants against the former Prime Minister Imran Khan. You have the former Foreign Minister Shah Mahmoud Qureshi, who's only just recently released from jail. How worried is the UN? Does the UN believe the rule of law is still properly, properly applying in Pakistan? Uh, on that, uh, for us, the important thing is that all peaceful protests must be able uh, to go ahead uh, without hindrance. It's clear to us that wherever they take place in the, in the world, people have the right uh, to peaceful protest and, and, uh, and uh, security forces around the world should allow them uh, to go forward. Uh, uh, yes, you, and then, and then we'll go to, to Edie, yes. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, of course. Uh, the, the escalation is 
uh, is mounting now uh, between the uh, incumbent government and the uh, position, main opposition party, Pakistan Tariq Insaf, resulting in dozens of injuries and one person dead. Um, Sir James may not know about that. One person is already dead, two, but one confirmed. Uh, well, regarding that, if, 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 there, if there are any deaths, those would need to be uh, investigated thoroughly. Uh, and, uh, and of course, there needs to be accountability uh, for any deaths or injuries that, that occur. Uh, but of course, uh, in situations like this, we call on security forces to exercise maximum restraint. Edie? Thank you, uh, Farhan. Uh, two additional follow-ups on uh, the Black Sea Grain Initiative. Uh, first, um, I think that um, some of the, the media in Kyiv were disappointed that there were no questions taken by the Secretary General. Uh, was there some reason for that? And um, well, I'm 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 not sure entirely about how the arrangements were developed, but I believe that uh, the arrangements for the press event were uh, worked out in coordination with the Ukrainian authorities, and we tried to get uh, both the video and uh, the um, and the transcript to you as quickly as possible. What will he be? Um, taking questions from us when he returns about this trip. It would be, I'm sure, much appreciated by everybody in Anka. Oh, we, we will convey that uh, to him. Um, secondly, uh, does he plan to uh, contact uh, any of the Russian authorities about the outcome of his talks with President Zelensky? Uh, he, we will continue to be in discussion, including through the Secretary General, with, with uh, principal people uh, both in Ukraine and Russia. I don't have any specific uh, contacts uh, to, to say at this stage. Uh, but, but from our standpoint, it's, it's very clear uh, that uh, the Secretary General will continue to do uh, all he can to remove obstacles uh, to the export of Russian fertilizers. And that, does that include sending Rebecca Greenspan back to Moscow any time in the next few days? Uh, at this stage, uh, uh, as, I, as I said, uh, Rebecca Greenspan will be meeting with senior Russian officials in Geneva next week. So that's the next step, and we'll see whether anything further is needed than that. Uh, before we go to the next question, I, I, I do want to make one clarification to something I said about cross-line. There was a cross-line delivery in Syria last week, but it wasn't to northwest Syria. It was to the Ras al Ain Tal Ablad area, which is different from the northwest. Uh, yes, uh, Linda, and then, and then you can go after that. Thanks, Farhan. Again, in relation to the Black Sea Initiative, um, how significant, for example, we know you've mentioned also that there have been obstructions in the delivery of Russian fertilizer, ammonia, et cetera. How significant is that delay in terms of the actual humanitarian impact, for example, on people in Africa and elsewhere, and also on wor uh, world food prices? The, the delay in? In actual, in, uh, not, in other words, in countries not actually receiving the fertilizer because of the instructions. Well, it's difficult to gauge what the, the impacts are because the long-term impacts are very serious because if you can't get fertilizer in time in certain areas, including in many of the African countries that need it, then you can't grow crops and then, and then down the line, the, it has an effect in food production. So although food prices have thankfully been de decreasing for 11 consecutive months, as, uh, as uh, Maximo Torero uh, told you last week, at the same time, the long-term horizon is, is iffy, precisely because we need to make sure that people can actually cultivate crops, and, and, and for that, they need fertilizer. Um, yes. Uh, still on uh, Russia and Ukraine, and not at the Black Sea, but on the Baltic Sea, there was a recent report about uh, some intelligence sources indicating that uh, the, the explosion in the Nord Stream uh, pipeline 
was carried out with a group uh, pro-Ukraine, a non-state actor. Uh, how is the Secretary General uh, reaction uh, about this uh, recent uh, uh, development? And does he support conducting an investigation into uh, the circumstances and the incident uh, related to the Nord Stream uh, blowing up explosion? Thank you. Well, certainly it should be investigated by uh, different competent authorities on this. Uh, we don't have any first-hand information about uh, about these latest allegations, so we have no way to evaluate uh, them. But obviously, it's a concern if anyone tries to blow up uh, critical infrastructure. And uh, and so yes, it, it's up to the relevant authorities to investigate. Uh, yes, Ma Abdul Majid. Yeah, something is happening. Yeah, uh, thank you, Farhan. I have a. Uh, Two questions. Well, first, on today's International Women's Day, and the last year, the biggest woman struggle globally has been in Iran, and, and hundreds of women sacrificed even their lives and activists defending women's rights there. Does the Secretary General has any message for them? As um, he usually speaks on this day as statements. Uh, and also, the second one is about, again, about Iran. Um, the cases of the schoolgirl poisoning keep rising, reportedly. Uh, the, there are now talks about even uh, up to 5,000 schoolgirls have been poisoned um, in Iran. And, um, there's no clear who, who's doing this or not. The Iranian authorities say we are launching an investigation. And the activists are um, accusing radical groups close to the government do you have does the united nation have any um, um, information about this any credible sourcing uh, even from your special rapporteur about what's happening to these schoolgirls well uh, we we certainly have been following the reports about um, about poisoning among school children uh, and uh, the un country team has offered support to speedily and accurately ascertain the facts of this issue uh, obviously, we would. Uh, it's important uh, for the Iranian authorities to investigate this uh, fully and transparently, and uh, and uh, but uh, we'll continue to monitor what's going on there. Uh, regarding your initial question, of of course, uh, we stand for the rights of women uh, uh, around the world, including in Iran, including as as I pointed out earlier in Afghanistan. Uh, in, in any place where their basic rights uh, have, have had uh, different issues that prevent the full realization uh, of women's rights. And so we, we insist upon that. investigation into the poisoning, uh, schoolgirl poisoning? Well, uh, our country team in Iran has indicated to the authorities their willingness to help ascertain the facts of this issue. Uh, obviously, we'll have to see what happens. But but at the very least, it's it's incumbent on the Iranian authorities to investigate this, like I said, fully and, uh, and in a transparent manner. Uh, Stefano. Thank you, Farhan. Um, the two follow-up, uh, first one. Um, yesterday, you answered um, on the call that the Secretary General did uh, with the uh, Deputy Foreign Minister. You say, um, you say practically that the UN high-level <coughs> UN staff will meet in uh, Geneva next week. And so I ask again, but was the intention of the Secretary General during the trip in, in Kiev uh, did he ask, or was his intention to actually be able to go also to Russia to talk? No, no, he is not. Uh, he did not plan a trip uh, to Moscow at this time. Okay. So, and uh, another follow-up is on uh, Iran, um, and uh, actually the visit uh, of Mr. Grassi on the nuclear issue. Um, the. Apparently, Mr. Gross has said during a press conference that that um, is uh, an attack of Israel to nuclear capability of the Iran uh, will be uh, illegal. At uh, that point, 
uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu responded that, um, you know, if Israel will do something like this, it would be for self-defense because um, Iran has declared many times that wants the destruction of Israel. So if Israel's attack means that they are close to the atomic bomb. So my question is, uh, um, does the Secretary General think that um, will be legal or illegal if Israel or United States attack, bomb those um, uh, nuclear capability if they have proved that they have, uh, you know, if they, they, they actually are not intended for civil capability but for military one? Uh, Stefano, as you know, it's our long-standing practice not to answer hypothetical questions, and I'm not going to engage in that. My, my basic point is that all countries need to do what they can to de-escalate the situation uh, uh, around Iran and its nuclear program, and we continue to encourage them to avoid anything that would contribute uh, to any escalation of tensions. Uh, if the guy. Uh, thank you, Farhan. Uh, as you know, there is a conference on women in Islam going on uh, in the ECOSOC chamber. And the message that is coming out almost unanimously, apart from other issues, is that the Taliban action against women and girls is not according to the injections of uh, Quran and uh, Islam. Uh, do you have any comments on that? A comment on whether it's in conformity with Islam? That, that's way outside my purview. Uh, you, you, you know what's in the Quran as well as I do. And, and I think I would leave it to people who've, who have read that book to see what is in it and what isn't. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, you also have? The situation floods in Pakistan. Uh, yesterday I was told that uh, uh, the 40% of the uh, total amount was, uh, you know, uh, collected by the received by the UN. The rest 60% is still waiting. My question is like, are you going to release that 40% whatever you collected or it is going to be like together? Yeah, right? Yes, when we receive actual cash in hand, not, not simply the pledges, but the, the money, we, we use that to, to get the necessary goods and bring that in. So, so we, we do that as we can. And of course, we encourage uh, donors to come up with the rest of the money as soon as they can. And with that, let me turn the floor over to Paulina Kubiak. Uh, Farhan, 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 I have a question. I have a question, Farhan. All right, Joe, go right ahead. What is it? I'm on the chat line, okay. Uh, on this International Women's Day, uh, I want to know whether this, what this, does the Secretary General believe that biologically born males who identify as women should be considered women for the purposes of this day? I believe that's a matter that's uh, that's uh, being discussed uh, uh, by different parties. I, I wouldn't uh, venture an opinion on that at this stage. Have a good day.